All right. So um, our guest neuroscientist today is Dr. Husseini. And Dr. Husseini is a neurobiologist who conducts research regarding Alzheimer's disease and brain aging. He's currently a professor at Columbia University where his lab is working with rodents to identify neurons that are not functioning well and or correctly during the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. And he is looking at ways to block the progression of this disease. So he is here today to talk a bit about what all of this means and what he does as a neurobiologist. And he'll also be here to answer any of your questions that you have. Um, so I am going to stop sharing my screen. And I think I have to. Uh, shall I share my screen now? Yes. I think okay. I need you a co host, so you should be able to share your screen now. Uh, okay. Uh, Somebody is entering the room. Shall I let them? John, Tia? No, I think we're good to leave them. Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. There you go. All right, can you see? Yeah, you can see your screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hello, guys. Uh, thank you, Ellie, really, for uh, having me here. I'm really excited. It's my first time, well, it's my second time teaching uh, fourth to six, sixth graders. I used to teach in New York for one semester and it was a lot of fun. I used to do in person anatomy classes to all the kids, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, let me turn on my laser pointer so I can point at things. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to talk about how Alzheimer's. So, okay, uh, feel free to stop me. You can unmute yourself and ask me questions. But I'm also going to go a little faster so you can ask me questions towards the end. So either way, so I don't mind whatever you prefer. So I'm going to talk about uh, how Alzheimer's disease affects the brain. And uh, the outline of the talk is I'm going to talk a little bit about me, how I got interested in uh, what I do currently, and uh, and a little bit about Alzheimer's disease and then about my research itself. Okay. Uh, so starting with myself, uh, I was I I got really interested at one point about uh, poisons and toxins, right? So I used to know about which snake would carry what toxin, what it causes, and look, that, that like really affected my early days of studies. So when I did my master's in toxicology, and then I got like obsessed with the brain because that's how toxins affect. They, they alter the brain in different ways, and then you, you finally uh, hallucinate or do crazy stuff. And then I got, wanted to really understand what the brain does. So I went to Germany to do my PhD on actually the brain of the bee. So if you remember, uh, bees have like a fascination for flowers, right? So they have to fly from a hive, their own hive to flowers. But how do they get back? I mean, how do they know? Because you see bees really, really far away from their own hives, but they make, make it back somehow. So I was studying how these bees are really smart and I was like observing their brain. And then I got even more interested and I wanted to study mice, so, which is what I was doing in New York in Columbia University. So then I studied some really uh, smart mice. So they were like, they had some specific genes in their brain, which made them smarter. So I was like studying for a long time uh, why this particular set of mice are so smart but then i it hit me that oh if we can study smart mice why, why can't i study something that is naturally occurring so you might remember that we are uh, very forgetful people so we tend to forget easily and there are diseases around which there is a lot of forgetting happening so that's when i got interested in alzheimer's disease so like ellie uh, pointed out uh, so a lot of dementia has has the problem that people have these symptoms of they easily forget. So I'm going to like first tell you what exactly Alzheimer's disease, but then also go into uh, how it is caused and whom does it affect specifically and at what point. 
and where does it appear in the brain, okay? So these are the main points I'm going to talk about. So if you Google uh, for Alzheimer's disease, this is the picture you get. So this is a very interesting picture they chose because it shows like an old woman here and this, uh, and this man, he's trying to show uh, this woman that there is, do you remember this person in the picture? So that actually captures what happens in Alzheimer's disease. So there is memory loss. And, and when you get really, really old, you don't remember even your loved ones, like maybe your granddaughter, right? Uh, so this is one of the biggest problems today. And I'm going to play like a brief uh, video. Uh, I don't know if I can do that. Let me see. Oops. Going Can you hear? Yes, we are. I just have to go pee. I'll be right back. So in this, she's she's going inside her home to look for something, to go to to the toilet, right? You're you're supposed to find where the toilet is in your home, and now look look at what happened. So. looks like she's looking for where the toilet is but she cannot find it so that's that's what happens in alzheimer's disease so this is a movie called still alice if you get a chance you should watch it is a really good movie in in this particular example who is julianne moore here she's in her 50s so this is a special case of alzheimer's disease called early alzheimer's disease so this is uh, what happens because of some genetic uh, mutations in your body. But I'll talk about it uh, later. But here are the main signs and symptoms. These are the exact 10 outlined on many of the website, but the, oh, the most important one is confusion actually, which is the early, earliest sign. So confusion in time and place is something very common. So what happens is people step out of their homes and they never make it back because they don't know where to go back to because that, that's one of the biggest problems. So a little bit of history, how it started. It started in 1901, right? So there was this woman called Augusta, right? She was at that time uh, 51 years and uh, actually she was much younger uh, when she came for the diagnosis. So she came, she had problems with uh, dementia, memory loss. She was like uh, hallucinating, stuff like that. And she met with uh, Dr. Aloysius Alzheimer. That's how the name comes from, right? Because he discovered somebody to have this problem. It was named Alzheimer's disease. So he was really young at that time. And he found that Augusta was really forgetful. And after she had passed away, six years after she came, because she gave, came, became really, really bad. And when, we, when he looked at her brain, there were like two really interesting things called plaques and tangles. I'll tell you what it is uh, um, in a bit, but uh, I'm sure Ali uh, explained to you what a healthy neuron is in the brain. These are exactly like regular cells. Special thing about neurons is they can actually talk to other cells really far away. So one neuron in your, like maybe your leg, right? it's talking to your brain because that's how you know the pain is in your leg. So they are really far off and they can communicate so easily. But the problem with Alzheimer's disease, these plaques and tangles, which are the bad proteins, they start eating up the neurons and start, um, uh, so makes actually the head really smaller as, as they grow old. So I don't know if you're able to watch this um so this is telling you how a neuron communicate with each other through electrical charges that travel down axons 
causing the release of chemicals across tiny gaps to neighboring neurons. Other cells in the brain, such as astrocytes and microglia, clear away debris and help keep neurons healthy. In a person with Alzheimer's disease, the most basic form of dementia, toxic changes in the brain destroy this healthy balance. These changes may occur years, even decades, before the first signs of dementia. Researchers believe that this process involves two proteins, called beta amyloid and tau, which somehow become toxic to the brain. It appears that abnormal tau accumulates, eventually forming tangles inside neurons. And beta amyloid clumps into plaques, which slowly build up between neurons. As the level of amyloid reaches a tipping point, there is a rapid spread of tau throughout the brain. But tau and beta amyloid may not be the only factors involved in Alzheimer's. Other changes that affect the brain may also play a role over time. The vascular system may fail to deliver sufficient blood and nutrients to the brain. The brain may lack the glucose needed to power its activity. Chronic inflammation sets in as microglial cells fail to clear away debris and astrocytes react to distressed microglia. Eventually, neurons lose their ability to communicate. As neurons die, the brain shrinks, beginning in the hippocampus, a part of the brain important to learning and memory. People may begin to experience memory loss, impaired decision-making, and language problems. As more neurons die throughout the brain, a person with Alzheimer's gradually loses the ability to think remember, make decisions, and function independently. Great. So you understood that these two proteins, plaques and tangles, actually a beta and tau proteins lead to plaques and tangles. So what happens is one of them is attacking hippocampus and another one is attacking entorhinal cortex. These are two regions of the brain uh, which are really important for uh, memory. So who is it affecting? So there are like two types of uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, we know. One is a late onset which affects 64, 5 years and older and looks like women get it more than men for some reason we don't understand. And also there is a specific gene called APOE4 and if you have like uh, let's say two copies of this you're like really likely to get it. So the early onset is what we just saw in the movie, uh, a movie clip, and it's very rare, but it happens. And there is like a specific gene mutation in the APP and uh, PSE, and you don't have to know the details, but just to let you know that these, it's a genetic mutation and you can carry it to your kids and you can get it from your parents, stuff like that. And it's really early stage where this happens, right? And uh, what we are interested like in this part is uh, the temporal lobe, which has both the entorhinal cortex and, uh, and the hippocampus you just saw, right? So this is the human brain. And uh, these are the two regions we are interested in, which are also interest, uh, important for memory, right? And there, I study the mouse brain because it's really convenient uh, to do a lot of fun experiments in a mouse than, than humans. Uh, so what we do, we exactly locate the hippocampus, the yellow, and the blue part is the entorhinal cortex. So what we do is we study plaques and tangles in entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus, right? So, and uh, the reason being plaques and tangles. So I'll switch back and ask a basic question, which every one of you know, or how does the GPS work? So GPS needs three things. You need a map, right? Uh, in your in your dad and mom's car, you've seen this on your phone too. You need a map. You need to know where you're going to. Let's say you want to go to your uh, ice cream shop. You need to know where it is. And you also need to know the direction we are going. You don't want to go backwards somehow. Uh, so interestingly, even our brains have a GPS uh, and those are located in hippocampus and entorhinal cortex. So I'll explain you what they are. Ignore the direction for now because we are be, uh, will be focusing on place cells and grid cells. Uh, so what we do in my lab 
we take these really tiny wires, they're called tetrodes, and we insert it in the brain. And in the brain, because there are so many neurons, we are listening or we are recording the activity of the neurons. You know, uh, neurons produce a small amount of electricity, which we can record. So this is what the tetrode does. And then we can look at the mouse as it's doing like behavior, right? So let's see what happens if we look at one of the neurons. The, we'll start with the hippocampus neuron. And you will see in this video, and the animal is like being watched from the from top, right? And the red dots are where, wherever the neuron is firing. So, and the gray part is where the animal. So, looks like this place is special for some reason. So the, the brain likes to remember this location, right? So that's why we call this is, uh, as a place neuron, right? So, and, and there's a second neuron in the internal cortex called a grid neuron. So you see as the animal is running around, you'll see like a pattern emerge. So I'll let you watch it so you know uh, what the pattern is. Yeah, now it's a little sped up so you can see the pattern emerging. Yeah, so, so that's one neuron being recorded over, uh, over like 20 minutes. And you can see there is a nice grid like pattern, right? I mean, do you, I don't, uh, you can see that they are like nicely separated. So these neurons are special in, in the internal cortex, right? Uh, so, so GPS, so these are the two GPS neurons we are interested in. So the hippocampus has the place neuron, which you saw it is in one place and a grid neuron is like a grid like pattern, right? So what my lab did, we introduced um, in, for example, hippocampus, some plaques. We artificially put in a mouse, some plaques, and we wanted to see, oh, what happens to now, to these neurons now? And you see when there are no plaques, the neurons are very nice. I mean, they, they, they are really sharp and located in one place, but the moment the plaques go in, you see it's uh, the neuron cannot find the location. It's firing all over the place and it's all like messed up. So this is what happening. So it's your neurons are being destroyed. And similarly with, uh, with tangles, right? We introduced tangles in the internal cortex. And then we looked at the neurons again. And you see with no tangles, it looks really nice and beautiful here but here they are all over the place the the pattern between this and this is really huge so so that's what tangles do so in both these cases the plaques and tangles they are bad for memory right so what we do is one of them is water maze water maze is like a really nice test if you ever come to my lab i can show it to you so what we have is this blue disc is like a platform in middle of a water maze. So the animal is dropped here and it has to find its place and look for the platform. So you can keep doing it and after some time if the animal learns, the moment you put the animal in the water, it will jump uh, or it will swim really fast to that uh, platform. But if the animal is has Alzheimer's disease, it cannot find the platform. It keeps going in circles and that's how we know that it's not doing well. So here is another task. So let's say I give you two different objects. You can identify them, right? But here, some of my mice, when I give them two different objects, they think it's the same object and they don't explore the new object that much. So they have a problem identifying object, right? And third one is a T-maze. So in a T-maze, it's called T-maze obviously because it's T-shaped. In this, we put food on one side and the animal has to come pick the food. And there's food on the other side, the animal has to go pick food from that side. So 
So sometimes the animal, they cannot remember which side the food is and they keep going to the wrong side. So it looks like they, they have problem finding. So that's, that's, that's what plaques and tangles do. So they destroy neurons and they are bad for the memory. Right? And uh, Ellie mentioned this for dementia, unfortunately, there is no cure, but there are ways to uh, get around it. You can probably increase the memory with some medicines, uh, but what we are trying to do is you have to identify the disease very early because by the time you find somebody has a disease, it's very, very late. And another way to do it is if you can reduce by some way these plaques and tangles which are destroying the neurons, uh, you, you can do that. So this is what we are trying now. So what we did we, in, in the mouse brain, there, so we, we have the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain, right? You probably studied this. So what we did, only on the right side, we reduced the brain activity because uh, usually the neurons are hyperactive. They fire a lot. So what we did, we reduced activity and you see on the right side, the, it's less dark, meaning that it's, the plaques are gone on the right side. Same with the tangles. So when we reduced uh, brain activity, there are no tangles anymore. So this is really good news because uh, we are excited to test what happens later. Uh, but now in the, in the future, we are trying to see if we can identify plaques and tangles earlier, if we can identify memory problems earlier and, and if we can improve memory. So something, so one way to do it is we have to record from many, many neurons in the brain. And uh, one of the ways uh, you can do, we can also do is if we can use an, like a really nice technology called optogenetic. So what it does is it controls the neurons by, by shining light into the brain. So literally this mouse is here. It has been implanted with an electrode and an optogenetic tool. So what happens is, and oh, let me go back. Oh, can I play? Okay, uh, for some reason I cannot play this video, but, uh, but it's okay, I think. Okay, never mind. So the second part is we are trying to make the animals play a game so we can record from many, many neurons in the brain. So here, remember, so we are trying to encourage animals to find like a maze solve problems so we are putting them in front of these nice screens so they can run and and you can what you don't see is this little wire here uh, which is attached to the brain also here and from there we can record a lot of neurons and hopefully we can understand the brain better and maybe understand a little bit more about alzheimer's disease so I'll stop there so you can ask me a lot of questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I, I stop sharing my screen. If you have questions, please go ahead. Oh. Uh, Kim, uh, yeah. okay. Let me look at the chat, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we have a few questions that were asked beforehand. So, um, Kridaya, right? Yeah, oh, they'll come. Yeah, they, let them ask. I'm happy to answer. So, Julia wanted to know what it is like to study the brain in the lab. Oh, what it is like. So, uh, so lab uh, in, the, in the beginning is um, a, a lot of work, but but the way we do it is we study the uh, mouse brain, right? So like I showed you, uh, we have to like work with the mouse brain and, and we have like a lot of interesting tools in neuroscience to study the brain. And uh, I show you, showed you electrodes and these tools where you can also control the, 
the activity of the brain. So it, it is a lot of fun. And I have like every year, a bunch of students who come and like experience it firsthand. All right, so we had another question. Um, what is your favorite part of your work? Oh, uh, my favorite part is definitely playing with the mice. Uh, so they're really cute animals and they, as, as you work with them, they really grow fond of you. And, uh, and the more comfortable they are with you, the more better they would do with the, with the experiments. And, uh, and I, I feel that mice are one of the very few animals that have contributed to science in a big way. Even now with the COVID-19, all the tests have been done on mice and I think it's an important part of research. If anyone wants to ask any questions, you can just unmute yourself. That's fine. Oh, somebody asked me if uh, dyslexia is considered a disease. Uh, I think maybe that's for you, Ellie. I think it was uh, Kimaya Chawal. Yeah, so any questions are if you have any answers for them. Oh, I see. So yeah, uh, dyslexia is not a problem per se, but I mean, there is like a speech uh, problem, but I think as as you go, uh, it's, it's an easy fix. So it's not like a huge uh, problem compared to all the other diseases. You know. Um, um yeah Kesho? so some people yeah some people are able to like move their ears without to like touching them me being one of those people uh what part of the brain kind of controls that oh good question actually it's 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 a muscle itself i think there is a small population of people well it's it has to be somatosensory uh, sorry, motor neuron. Uh, so some, some people are able to, because remember our ears are vestigial organs. We, animals used to be able to do that, but our ears, uh, they don't move anymore because we are, uh, they're not supposed to. But some people over time, they didn't lose the ability to move ears. So probably you're one of them. And that's a fun fact. <laughs> I would say motor mm -hmm. cortex, yeah. Well, so you, you're probably, your motor cortex is still working better than others. <laughs> All right, someone else asked, how long have you been teaching? Oh, uh, so I've been teaching for five years now, but uh, I do mainly research and summer is the only time I actually get to teach. So what I do in summer is I, now whoever is writing to me, I invite them to the lab and I teach them one-on-one -on -one as they're doing some projects uh, in the lab, but they have to have some biology experience to be, yeah, to be in the lab. Right, so he wants to know if you like cats. Oh yeah, I see that. I do love cats, actually. I'm more of a cat person than a dog person. So yes, I do like cats. <laughs> All right, um, someone else wanted to know, how do you introduce plaques and tangles into the brain? Very good question. So, well, so the, these are genetically modified brains, uh, mice. So you can already buy I mean, you've been to a pet store, right? You can you can find your own type of a dog or a cat. Similarly, in science, you you have these big big uh, shops where we can buy mice with different kinds of um, things in the brain. Uh, and in some cases, we made it ourselves. So you just introduce in the, in the brain, or you can directly take human brain extract and inject like tau directly into the brain too that that's one way we have been doing right now 
How did you get interested in neuroscience? Yeah, I, like I told you in my first slide when I was studying uh, toxicology, um, and I, 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 I was fascinated by how these poisons, poisonous substances were affecting the brain. And then I left toxicology and went to study neuroscience. And why use mice? Okay, because um, mice are easy to breed. So within a month, you will have 10 mice from one mother, right? Uh, so you can have like many, many mice every month much faster. And genetically, they're really close to humans. So a lot of the things they discovered in mice are true for humans too. And also I showed you a slide on the brain and you see how the internal cortex and hippocampus have the same exact function. So that, that's how I don't, somebody is asking, do I test humans? No, I don't, but I work in a hospital and I know my colleagues work with humans and I help them sometimes uh, understanding, so like collaborating. So we go back and forth. So they ask me questions, I ask them questions. So humans and mice are the main uh, research tools for us, yeah. Are you interested in any other things are now? Yes, I am interested in many things. I play tennis, <laughs> I go hiking, um, I go, yeah, uh, I like climbing mountains. I've done many so far. Eating turmeric helps Alzheimer's disease, is that true? Uh, yes, it, it, I don't know if you could, uh, it, it's proven completely, but turmeric is a really good substance uh, because it's an antioxidant and it has a lot of antibacterial um, uh, stuff. So it's definitely good to eat turmeric, I would say, but it's, I don't know if it's proven that it can cure Alzheimer's disease, but there's a lot of research going on and your guess is as good as mine. I have another question. Um, what is the most interesting thing that you have done as a neuroscientist? So we, uh, so optogenetics, right? So I, I think I mentioned before, uh, so we were able to manipulate the brain. Uh, can I share my screen briefly? I uh, know. Yeah, you should be able to. Oh, I should be able to? Okay, let me check. Uh, share. Oh, yeah, there, right. Uh, you see it? No, yeah. Yep. Yeah, for example, here, right? So this mouse, uh, it has this blue light shining on the back. You see that? So that light is actually controlling the brain of the mouse. So those are some of my favorite experiments like there. Another mouse, you see, we, we were controlling the animals, one part of the neuron uh, as the animal was like just sitting there so we can, so that, that's the coolest part about um, science. I think you, you have like so many interesting tools in neuroscience these days um, that, that's like it's actually exploding so do I only study Alzheimer's disease no I study also aging what I didn't show you in my research was uh, also with the age there is forgetting but it's not as bad as Alzheimer's disease Alzheimer's disease is the worst but the, so we're trying to see how aging memory loss is different from Alzheimer memory loss. So, so don't worry if you forget to put things away easily, you're, you're not having Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's like a really extreme case is, like I told you, if you step out of your house and, and you're not in your new house or something, you've been there many days and you can't get in, which happens to really, really old people with Alzheimer's disease, they often get lost very easily. So. Uh, that's why I also study aging to understand the differences. Mm, other things. You said you extracted human brain. No, I. Uh, what, what happens is when people 
um, get really old and they, they, they die, they donate their brains. So one of the biggest uh, advantage of people donating their brains is we can look at their brains, right? We can look at their brains, we can see what happened. And, and what we can do is for those who have Alzheimer's disease, we, we can extract tangles and plaques. We, we extract tangles and you can put it in like a small test tube and you can inject it in a, into a mouse brain and see how that those tangles affect mouse. So that's what we do. So what's the difference between Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's? So Alzheimer's disease is caused by tau, uh, plaques and tangles. Parkinson's disease, not so much. It's a different protein. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a whole different uh, disease type, right? So, and it causes like a hand tremors. It affects the par uh, dopaminergic system, which is a different part of the brain. Uh, and you lose control of your fine movements. That's why you see people with Parkinson's, they have like shaky hands and stuff like that. So that's very different and you can easily, they do also have like later on, uh, memory problems, but one of the first symptoms is not memory in Parkinson's. All right, so we're running out of time, but I had one last question for you. Yeah, um, what advice would you give to students who are interested in pursuing STEM? Oh, uh, so one of the biggest driving factors should be your curiosity, I think. So if you're curious about like any little thing, uh, I would just pursue it and like try to I try to find out why something. So the the question why has to be really strong if you want to find out about something, but also think completely through until the end. So what can I do with my question? Can I do something interesting and follow it through until the end and think about it? Talk to your parents, talk to everyone, and, and then make a decision. And if you really want to pursue STEM, because some people are really good at art, and if you can have a conflict, but you should make sure you try to explore everything and then make a decision. All right. Good thank question. You. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Keisha. Yeah, Keisha, go ahead. Um, if you can extract the tangles and plaques, yes. can't you? extract them from people with Alzheimer's, like use a sedative and put them to sleep and then extract the tangles? No, if you, uh, so in, in my video, I, sh I what I didn't mention uh, was these tangles are inside of a neuron. So to extract the new, the tangles from a live person, you will be killing the neurons. So that's the problem. So. You cannot do that uh, in a live person, but people are trying many ways to clear uh, tangles, right? One of the ways I showed you in our mice was we were reducing activity to uh, remove plaques and tangles. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we're going to finish with our questions today. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. for coming. Um, I'm just going to share my screen one more time. Um, as always, keep checking your emails for information on next week's session. Sadly, it's going to be our last session together, but more excitingly, I'm going to get to be able to share all of your amazing projects with everyone else in your session. So make sure that you are finishing those and sending those to me at least one or two days before the before um, next week. Um, yeah, so a bunch of other information is going to be coming to you in that email, so make sure you keep looking at it. Um, everything, all these slides, um, the recording of today's session is going to be put on the website, thereignofthebrain.com. So if you ever really want to watch, if you want to watch those really cool videos that Dr. Husseini was t showing us, um, you can always go back and look at those. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, thank you for everyone for coming today. Thank you, Dr. Husseini, for taking the time to come and talk to us today. And I'll see thank all you of you much. next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.